afternoon. I say afternoon, it is afternoon as I am filming this. I hope you are all well. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. I am, <coughs> excuse me, I am filming this on Tuesday the 26th of September and I am doing this uh, with something specific in mind. Now if you were watching Hobby Maker here in the UK on the, the Saturday just past, which would have been Saturday the 23rd of September, you will have seen that I had a Christmas layering scene stamps on the go. So I had this set, all four of these ones, on the show. And one of the finished samples that I showed that I really loved the look of that it doesn't have a name on the design team that made it was this one and I did say live on air that what I would do is I would film a tutorial of a, a very 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 similar style now I'm going to be using a, a, a white card blank but the actual style, design, concept, I'm just going to follow on through exactly the same. So that is what I'm doing within this video here. Now, it's been lovely because although that I had these on Hobby Maker just on the Saturday Pass, as I say, it's Saturday the 23rd, if you are watching it kind of like in real time, this video. I hadn't actually used them since last year. And I say use them quite light, like quite lightly and quite loosely because I gave you a demonstration of how they work, but I didn't actually do a complete card. I just stamped them out to show you the concept of that layering technique. So therefore, that's why really looking forward to just having a little play, little a dabble when it comes to our quick dries, when it comes to our stamping platform, and of course when it comes to these stamps in the style that we're going to be making, and it is that style. That being said, let me get an 8x8 card blank out. Now, I might not keep it 8x8. I might trim it or change it uh, slightly, but at least uh, having my card blank here and ready, that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. So when it comes to these ones, uh, I like to use my quick dry. Now, of course, you can be using uh, your pigment ink pads if you want to, some of your newer ink pads if you want to, but I do love that tone, that buildability of tone and depth that you get with a quick dry. Certainly if you give a second, a third, fourth impression when it comes to the ink pads. So let me get my stamping platform. Things like this, these always work well, always work the best, in my opinion, with our 8x8 stamping platform. So that's what we're going to be using just here. Let me just pop my phone on silent because we don't want that going off. Not that I get much messages, but I can bet your bottom dollar I've just updated my phone and this is when you get all the update messages coming through. So just popping that one off. But yeah, so this is our layering scene dies here. And we're going to be using the Santa over the rooftop. It's a really fun one. It's one that the kids would love as well. You know, but then that style, that concept that we're going to do when it comes to the layout that you can see here, giving the impression of the Santa belt just at the bottom. Probably won't use that same nest and die we'll probably use a circle one or probably even then use a square one but that's what we're going to go for when it comes to this style and this layout so what we're going to do to get started is we're going to be using i'm going to use our white multi-purpose for this one so i'm going to come in with my white multi-purpose and what i'm going to do as well i'm just going to cut this to kind of like a generic size. Now, what I want to just do is I just want to check roughly the length of them. So if I just do that, so roughly that's about, they're about six and a quarter inches in length when it comes to these ones. So what I'm going to do is, let's just cut it to about six and a half. Let's do, I'm going to do about, let's do six and a half by six and a half. Anyway, we'll keep it nice and square. And then if I want to trim, I can always trim afterwards. So let's stick with... Am I doing any mats and layers at the moment? No, I'm not. Let's just stick with our stamping here. And I'm going to come in with my stamping platform. So if I pop my cardstock into place... Now, I don't need to put it bang on centre in the middle of my stamping platform because I'm going to eyeball my layering stamps. I'm going to do it by eye because I personally find it a lot easier doing it by eye. And what I am going to do is I love the colour combinations. I wish whoever made this 
has their name on there but uh, whoever did make this if you are watching me drop me a little message so i can give you credit for this one i love the color tones that they've used i love that of course it's like your straw bale or uh, your reds you've got your blacks as well as honey pots so we're going to follow on with that one so what we can do is let's go in with our first layered stamp so we're going to come in with the first one and then what I'm going to do, I've got a funny feeling I did not clean these when I finished Hobby Maker. So I'm just going to tap some of that excess off. And I'm going to come along and I'm going to move my magnetic desks up there because I um, don't want them to get in the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and that base of the stamp, I'm going to line up against the base of my cardstock. Don't worry at this point if it's not going to be completely even and don't worry that your cardstock's a little larger or a little wider because what we're going to do is we will come along and we'll trim it down afterwards. So let's come along and then I'm just going to move my discs into place so it's going to hold it down. And I'm going to reach over with my arm in with my quick dries and just visually having a look. I think they've used the straw bale. They've definitely used the Chinese red. I'm going to go out. You can either use Noir Black or Jet Black. I think they've also, for the moon and the stars, they've used Honey Pot. And it, it has a form of grey that they've used for the clouds. So I don't think it's quite anthracite. It might actually be something like a misty morning. It might be even a lighter one. Let's go with smoked. Let's go with smoked plume. Doesn't really matter because they're all a grey tone. So either one will work. So our first layer here. If you didn't already know, you do have some colour indications on here so if you want to do what's been done on the front packaging color wise then of course you've got the colors there to show you for you to then use but let's go in with our stamping platform and then we're going to lift that up and then what we're going to do is we're going to start to layer up so let's go in with the straw bale and with a straw bale on any of your stamps at first glance, as you're popping the ink on, it doesn't really look like you've got any ink going on at all. But once we give the first impression, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do it a few times. We're going to come along and we're just going to keep building. We're going to build in up the strength. I don't want anything kind of too yellow and too... Uh, too mid-tone within the yellow. What I mean by that is I don't want to go with the honey pot where it's going to be kind of like a mediocre yellow. I want that lightness that we get from the straw bale, but I want to build up the tone of the straw bale. So by doing that, what we're just doing is we're just going to keep recapping with our ink. We're using our stamping platform, which means of course we get that in the exact same position each time. And what I will say with our stamping platform, ours does, it can move by, you know, a millimetre, half a millimetre or so. So whenever you hear me say on any of our shows that we do, pop it into place, let it settle. And that's me, let it settle. So I've come along, popped it in, because what I would have a tendency of doing is coming along straight down. Just give it that second to come along find its feet, no pun intended, that's it settled exactly where I need it, and then press. Now that then means, and that's what I've been doing the last twice as I've been popping these impressions on, let's do it again now just to show you now that I've verbalised what I do. Come along, turn it around, pop it back, let it settle, press and now I've pressed it back in the exact same position as I need because if you turn it around pop it in and press straight away like I used to do sometimes you can be left with kind of like a little shadow a little drop shadow now sometimes that can look quite cool but a lot of the time it's not what we wanted now we can see we're building up that scene within the building that you've got there keeping with that straw bale tone but then we're just intensifying it that little bit more. So it's not as dark as a honey pot, keeping that tone, but we're just building up the depth of it. 
So I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in with one more. Now, the amount of times you do it, it's personal preference on the tone of the colour. So if you want it very, 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 very light, let it settle, press. If you want it very, very, very light, then maybe just do it once or twice. Or, of course, you can do it three, four times. With quick dries, whenever I'm stamping out a stamp, usually I tend to do it about three times. Three times is usually the, the amount that I do the impression. What I'm just doing, what have I done now with my... Oh, here we go. Let's come along. I'm just going to take my stamp cleaner and let's bring in my solution so let's just move that out of the way because i don't want to take any of that color or uh, any of the cleaning solution and spritz it onto my stamped image so i'm just going to give light stamp i'm going to go in with the clean and then we're just going to go in and dry it off and this is really good for me to do it for you guys because it takes off any of the residual ink that I've got left over from Hobby Maker. So let's pop that out of the way. Not far out of the way because I'll be using it again for the other layers. I'm going to come back and just pop my stamp into place. And I'm going to come along with layer two. Now you can if you wanted to, bring in another piece. You can do things such as layer two and then the moon and the clouds at the same time because you're just changing the colour and they're far apart. But I am very much one that loves to do them all in their individual stages. So you can cut stages if you want to. But let's go in with our second layer. And as I said before, I do just like to eyeball the layers. You can use them, because they are the layering stamps, what you could do is you can then, of course, come along and because they've got a 90 degree corner, line that 90 degree corner up with the stamping platform. But I just go in and eyeball along the bottom, get that into place, get that into position. And then all that I need to do is press that in and we've got it into place. And then let's turn it around. We're going to go in with the Chinese red. So let's ink this one up. Love my quick dries. Absolutely love them. My all time favourite and probably always will be. And that's my water reactive. Because I love that water based techniques that you can do with them. Now we're going to go in there. Now for me that is a lovely tone but I want to intensify it even more. I want to get that smoothness when it comes to the impression of the ink. So let's go in a second. So let it settle. Press it into place. And then we've got our third layer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do it again. Now this time I will probably only do it three times. That's kind of like my go-to amount of pressions as I said before. Let's then turn that one around, pop it in, let it settle, press down and then that will be my uh, third one or my third impression anyway. It's my second stamp. So once again let's come along. Stamping platforms covering my stamp so I'll just spritz Give it a light spritz. And then we're going to come along. We're just going to clean that. Lay it flat. Cleaned it all off. Dry it off. And now we're good to go. So that one can go there. Just going to come along with our last layer for the scene building at the bottom. We've still, of course, got the moon and the clouds to go. Now, when I was on Hobby Maker the other day and I done a very quick demo, I actually demoed it wrong because I put Santa in the sleigh up at the top. But actually, it goes down here. It goes down here. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to line that up along the bottom and then we're going to take, let me just take my cloth here and then I'm going to press that in and then this time we're going to go in with our Noir Black. Now as I said before with the houses I've done in the red, now that I've done this bottom base in the black, I could have also done the moon in the clouds at this point and then just stamped them up with the corresponding colours. So you are able to skip steps but still get the same look at the end of the day. So let's press that in and then we're just going to go in. So I think this one, I can probably see myself given this four, four layers of ink just because I want that real strong silhouette at the front. So let's press that one into place. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Because like you at home, I have always thought what's the difference between Noir Black and Jet Black. So I wonder if the jet black is just exactly that. It is an actual proper jet, jet, jet black. So when you do your impression, let's press that in. Ah, yeah, so, ah, so that's the difference. So they're both black, but to get a real strong, strong black, go for your jet black. If you're wanting different depths of black, then use your Noir Black so you've got your lighter tone. Because I just thought, okay, I know I'd already done a couple of layers of Noir Black, but the difference already with one impression of Jet Black is so incredibly strong. Whereas to get that same level of black depth from the Noir Black, I would have had to have stamped that three, four, five times. Whereas with the Jet Black... It, oh gosh, yeah. Now I've just answered my own question as to really where is the difference between Noir Black and Jet Black. See, every day is a school day. So let's go in. Let's pop that one into place. Let me just click my feet back in. Let it settle. Press in. And now that's going to give me a gorgeous, strong black silhouette from our Santa and the reindeer. So now that that's that layer done, let me just set it out of the way just now before I come and finish off with the moon and the stars, or the moon and the cloud. Let's spritz. Let's come along. Clean all that off. I should really clean this, shouldn't I? Let me just clean that edge. Get into all of the little parts on my stamp. You can see here, hopefully you're not a crafter unless you've got inky hands. Let's pop that back. And then for this one, let's take the, let's do the, let's do the cloud there and cloud there like so right, so I'm not going to do all these colours at once I'm going to separate them but I just want a visual a visual idea as to where they're going to go so I like the moon I like the moon there and there and then I'm going to go, what way does a moon, moon go? I don't think it really matters, does it? Or how would I draw it in school? Yeah, like that. I can see what to think there. And then I've got two, oh, I've got a star of wonder. And then that. I just want to kind of space them out so they're a little bit pleasing. On the eye, like so. 
yeah, I'll put the cloud straight. I think that'll be that'll be okay. So let me just set that there. Let me come back with my stamping platform because these three I'm going to do in honey pot. So let's go with the honey pot and in cup. So turn that around. Make sure we're all good. Press in. And then let's go in again. Now these ones, you don't even need your large stamping platform. These ones, you could just come along with your little four by four afterwards and pop them into place. Let's ink that one up. There we go, happy with that. So let's take, now I'm not, I'm not going to spritz these because I've probably still got enough cleaning solution on here so let's take let's take that one off into here and then let's take that one off into there let's then give that a wipe off this is where I probably should have taken a photo as to where oh yeah no, we're fine and not get inky hands on there. And I'm just using each of these stamp once. You know, you can come along and stamp out the stars a couple of times if you want to, or the clouds a couple of times. Let's go in with the smoked plume. I'm just going to take a drink. I forgot to fill up my juice before I came on this video. Let's stamp that out. There we go. Now I'm going to leave it at that. Because there's a little bit of bubbly bobbly effect going there. So if I wanted that completely smooth, I would go on, stamp, stamp, stamp again. Whereas I like that bubbly effect that you've got from the clouds. So I'm going to leave it like that. And then what I'm going to do is let's take these off. And just give them a clean. As you can see, my stamps, I just leave them a hand. And then clean. If you want to be, if you if you want, I was about to say be more careful. You don't need to be careful, but if you want to eliminate the uh, possibility of getting ink on your hand, you could do it with gloves or something like that. I don't mind. Most crafters don't mind. So let's take all of that off there. I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to stamp out the stars or that any more than I already have done. I'm just going to take all of these and pop them back i'm going to pop these ones back into place and then let's go hello santa and i'm going to do that actually that's positioned really well if i thought beforehand i could have pre-planned something like that but as it is that's worked quite well the way that it's so in actual fact, we could have gone into there. But no, I'm going to go up into there. And even then, you don't need to use... Actually, you don't need to use these stamps. You can use other stamps if you wanted to. I'd actually, I don't know if I want a sentiment at the moment. I know the finished sample's got a sentiment, but I don't know if I want a sentiment at the moment. Let me take it off for now, because I might not. I might not go for one. Right, let me just take a wipe so I can clean my hands. And then what we're going to do is we'll go and I'll need to get some of my red cardstock from behind me. My luxury red. I use the luxury red. It's a, it's a really cool... Uh, cool layout when it comes to like the body of Santa. I remember a couple of years ago I sort of done this sort of design or this layout with another another uh, collection. I think it was a dye collection I used actually. It wasn't stamps. But it's quite cool just seeing uh, the kiddies love it. My little cousins at the time were a lot younger and they loved it. I think that the one wasn't even the 
the the die or the actual look of the die cuttings that I'd done. It was more the fact of, oh my God, it looks like Santa's belly. So, right, so let's take these ones off. Now, I am still going to, of course, trim that afterwards. Once I know exactly how I want the layout of my card to be. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to, let's actually come back that way because I've got my red card stock, which is here. So this is our luxury red. So this is the one where you get the 30 and a bit sheets, the 10 glitter, the 10 mirror and the 10 satin. So all my luxury card stock I just keep in here. Now let's take satin. Now satin is always, always, always my go-to when it comes to luxury cardstock. I'm not going to use any, actually. So if I bring in this finished sample that I'm replicating here, or sort of replicating, what they've done is they've used mirror in the back and then shedless glitter within this layer here. So what I'm going to do is instead of using mirror, I'm going to, I'm just going to tone it down slightly the mirror works, but I'm going to go in with the satin instead. So we're going to use the satin and then we're going to use the shedless glitter. So let's take that. And then what I want to do is, let's take these. I've got some black as well. So let's take my card blank so I've got my card blank and then I'm going to trim that a little bit so I'm going to trim of course just above above um if I don't my guillotine oh it's next to me just above the stars but keeping it to a quarter of an inch so I'm coming up to five inches and then I'm going to trim side by side here just so that I can then neaten off the edge so I'm going to trim and then I'm going to trim here, which is fine because then that comes to six inches. So you know what I'm like? I love my quarter of an inch increment. May trim it a little bit more once I start to layer up onto my card blank that we can see here. I think we might be okay, actually. So what I'm going to do, and I know I say this all the time, but the amount of mats and layers that I do is completely personal you might not want to do as much as I do you might want to do a little bit of distress background so it's in the sky of course you can do that but I'm just trying to keep these steps quite simple the black that's five this layer is five by six inches so I'm going to go just a little bit over five and just a little bit over six so I really just want a tight tight black frame now clearly my black cardstock is not straight, so let's straighten up a 90 degree corner. So let's go just over five and just over six. There we go, perfect. So I just need to trim just a little bit from the side there, like so. And you know what? I'm just going to do it an eyelash there, and a little bit there to line up. Perfect. That's what I want. No, I'm still just going because I really do just want that slither, like so. Perfect. That's what I'm wanting. So that's just pulling out that framework from Santa on the sleigh. What we can then do is let's take, before I go to my glitter matte and layer, let's go back to my card blank. So then I'm going to do the mats and layers for the card blank. So then I've got a visual idea of what size my glitter can be. So this isn't actually quite eight by eight. This one is, so I've got a bad batch of eight by eight card blanks that aren't even quite seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. I don't want to trim it. I know I like my up to quarter of an inch increments. I'm not going to trim it. 
because I don't want to lose any space. I want as much as I can, but I don't want to use an 8x8 because I'm wanting to use up all of these. So once again, we're going to go to black. So let's go seven and a half by seven and a half. So I'm just neatening up my edges here. So there's seven and a half by seven and a half. So if I pop that into there, my perfect matte layer. Then we're going to go in with the satin. So let's go seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And I'm going to take that to make sure it's nicely lined up, which it is. That's then going to go onto there. So let's bring this layer in. Like so. So I've got a little bit of scope to go in with a little bit of black here. So let's take, so if that's just after five, let's go five and three quarters by, so that's just after six. So let's go six and three quarters. Now, chances are I'm going to trim this, but let's take that here and then let's take that oh no that might be perfect because that still gives me a tiny tiny little bit of room there but then what I want to do is I still want room for my belt of course well not my belt but Santa's belt along the bottom here so let's, how's that going to look here? Let's come into there, into there. Go in with that little bit of framework. What I might actually do is overlap the belly band. That would look quite cool. So we're overlapping, right. Let's keep going. That was five. Five and three quarters by six and three quarters. So just in case, if you've never seen me do this before, sometimes, certainly with our black, it's not always straight on. So what I do is I trim an end and a top to make sure that this is the perfect 90 degree corner. So therefore, all the rest of my measurements are going to be accurate and completely square and straight. So five and three quarters. So let's go just over five and three quarters by just over six and three quarters again this is all optional you don't need to do these amounts of mats and layers it's just my personal preference if I bring that in yeah that's fine because I can still see a little bit of the red around we're going to come into here so that's going to be yep yeah, that's going to be fine but then let's come in. We've got a longer piece of black that I can use. So that black, what did I say was, did I say seven and a half? Yes, I did. That seven and a half, by the way, is the length of this black cardstock underneath. So if we go seven and a half by, let's do two inches for now. like so so let's go a little bit thinner so let's go one and a half bring this in like so yeah i'm liking this idea of that like separation part it looks quite cool now i want to give myself i'm going to have that uh belt buckle but with Santa, I think it looks really good when you do it in gold. I think that looks really, really good. So what I'm going to do is let's go with my gold luxury. And 
Actually, I'm not. I'm going to use gold satin. Yeah. Gold satin I'm just going to be using. So we're going to give this a little matting layer as well. So that was one and three quarters, I think I said, didn't I? So let's go, well, let's go two, two by seven and a quarter. No, what did I say? One and a half. So let's go one and three quarters. Like so. And seven and a half. I've undercut there. Start that again, Craig. Let me just straighten that up. One and three quarters by seven and a half. Because I just want my mat and layer top and bottom. I don't want it side by side. But even that gold is too thick. So let's come down a little more. So maybe let's have a look. Yeah, I think that yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Just underneath, just over the top. Kind of like that rooftop is kind of sitting on the belly band. So then I'm going to go in with my nest and dies. But I want more of... I want more of like a rectangle. Have I got my rectangles here? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I wonder, I know where I've got, our four by six, four by six 3D embossing folders with the nest and dies. Let's have a look at them. So 3D, yeah, this one, regal rectangle. So this one here has got the little rectangle nest and dies. Let's bring this one in. So it could be like a little... Oh my God, that's going to be perfect. Oh my God, that could not be any more perfect if I tried. So, let's move that out of the way. Let's bring these in. And then let's... Line these up like so. So let's just tape that to secure that. Let's bring in our mini. And then let's run it through. Do you know something? I must have about two packs of brand new mini folders and I keep using the same one it's like how many more ways can I how many more times can I keep using it so if I bring this one in that can be lined up I love it love 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 it and then what I also want to do is to let me think what have I got? What have I got? What have I got? Um, try to think of a tiny, tiny little die. Um, alphabet dies. Bear with me. Bear with me when I'm going with this. Um, uh, what would that do? Maybe not. Bear, 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 bear with me on where I'm going with this. Let's have a look. 
that do? Ah, uh, yeah, this will do. Now, I could very easily, what I'm going to do, I could really easily just use my guillotine for what I'm going to do here. But I wanted that kind of, you know, that little, um, I'm going to do the notches that you've got within the belt. But what I wanted to do as well is I wanted to come along and do the, um, the, uh, the little inner clip. What I mean by that is I've got these really old alphabet dies. So the I here... And this is what I mean by you could simply just cut this on your guillotine. But if I cut that, if I can find it, because now I've dropped it, oh, here we go. Hence why, Craig, you should always tape things down. So if I use that one, it just gives you more of that sleeker look because it's been cut properly with a little die. So this could be any elongated tiny little dies you can see this is an i from the alphabet so that i'm probably going to cut this don't want to cut too much away just now so that can then just tuck underneath there so it's going to be like the little latch bit or does it need to go that way? Always oh, more pleasing on that. I'm trying. I don't have a belt like this now, so is it that way? Or is it that way? Yeah, no, it's that way, isn't it? I think it's that way. So there's that. So it just gives you that die cut look. And then I uh, what have, I, have I still got please say I've still got one of my favourite dies that I used to use. It's called Floral bouquet, not hyacinth bouquet from Keeping Up Appearances. Ah, here we go. So this originally came with our Gemini Go floral bouquet. Debbie Robinson loves this one as well. We use it quite a lot. And all that I'm wanting is the little circles. I don't want the flowers. I just want these little circles. I think these are going to be a really nice size. So if I line... What circle size do I want? Oh, let's just cut it into bigger card, Craig, instead of faffing about. Let's just cut it in a bigger card. And then bring this one in. Do you know something? In this layer, I think I'm going to change it slightly. Because it just, see, although this will be neatened up, it's just kind of hovering in the middle there, even though it's got that bit of black. So if we take, now will it be, will it be that way? How does it now? I haven't to think, because my bell is just one of those kind of latch ones. Um. So yeah, so that'll be coming in, in that way, and then there'll be a hole there. So let's do them all the same size. Gosh, I'm trying to think how it, a belt looks. It's not as if I don't wear them all the time. I just don't have a good old-fashioned loop belt. Um, I'm not going to cut all that, am I? Let's try. Moral of the story, Craig. Go into your little 12 by 12 cube and get out a new folder. So yeah, I'm wanting the same size as so if I do that one. I'm not going to bend any of them. I'm still going to use all, all of them, of course. that one through right 
done that. Things would do for just one little circle. So there's that one. So I think three looks good. And then there'll be there would be one. There would be one that is just at the side there. So let's take that one into here. So let's run that through. Take that out. And I think, no, it's not there. It's one net, that's it. One and three. Yeah, that, that, that'll do, that'll do. Optional, if you want to put these little circles in, that's totally optional for yourself. But that is kind of the flow that we're going. Let me get a full another sheet of this gold satin because what we're going to do here is let's take this. What I'm also going to do as well, and can I just say as well, before I say what I'm going to say, Thank you so much for all your messages and your comments saying that you love that I do this in real time. I don't edit it. I don't take anything out. I don't change anything. I don't bring in anything that I've done. Here is one that I've done earlier. There may be occasions down the line where I'm going to have to do that, but that's really only on the extent of something that I really have to repeat a, repeat a number of times. But other than that, I don't edit. I don't cut. I don't change. I don't do anything. And the reason I'm saying that to you is... Because I'm filming this in real time, I'm just about to go down the stairs and get myself another tin of juice and then I'm going to come straight back. So I'll literally be a minute. Right, here we go. Back again. Let me just fill up my juice. That's me just filling up my juice, by the way. There we go. So, what I was saying before about um, my main image, it just seems to be floating there. Because my shedless glitter because my shedless glitter is a really dark tone. <clears throat> Ran downstairs and then just a mouthful of gassy coke. Because my red glitter card is a dark tone, what's happening is it's kind of fighting against the black. Nothing fights a, a lot with black, but the dark red is, and we're just kind of missing it. Now, I know we're not fully straightened up and what have you, but if we look at this layer, if I take away the black, but cut this in the same tone of the gold satin, it'll make it stand out a little bit more. So that's just over five inches. So let's go in to just over five inches and I want to say it was just over six wasn't it and bring that in but I'll also do it'll also help tie it in to the belt band so that there in midair doesn't look much but then if I bring this in against there it just it elevates it that little bit more it brings it in it ties it all in together and i just think it makes that world a difference big world a difference so let's take all of this and let's build our cards let me move all these bits out of the way so that i can then focus on this so I'll tell you what let's stick this together Let's bring in my double-sided tape, which of course is my go-to. What I'm going to do, where's my tappy glue? I'm just going to come along. Let's add, now I've not used this for 
a few days because I've been away at a hobby maker. Oh, there we go. I was just about to start prizing that with a little bit of flower forming foam wire. So let me just come along. And I'm just going to get that as central as I can. I'm just going to hold and press that for a few moments. Like so. I've got a little bit sticking out the side there, so I'm just going to let that continue to grab. And then I can come back and then neaten all that up. So let's take my tape. Now the gold that I'm adding it to, the gold I may very well need to add on foam pads. Just because we've got a few layers of depth here. But we'll play with that in a moment. We'll get all our layers layered together. And let's press that in. So we've got our layer. And again, I'm just underlapping there and no more. You can see a teeny little bit of gold sticking out. So let's neaten that up. And the black will be overlapping on that side. So let's neaten that up. So let's take my little band and then let's just snip away there and then that can then go nicely into the middle so let's keep that completely flat so let's take them and I'm just going to come down a little bit just so you can see so I want to try and centralize this the best that I can so there we go so I think I've got that in the center let's wipe off any excess glue let's press that one let's take my tape, that's it. wherever it is, find it in a minute, there we go, so that's that one, and then let's do my little dot there, let's pick up my little dot, and that can go there, and then let's do one, two, and then three, so wherever I do threes, I tend to do the left, the right, and then it's a good space for the middle. So I'm just making sure all of that is straight. Happy with that. Yeah, happy with that. So let's set that to the side while that's drying. Let's go in with all these layers now. So we're going to go back into the back of our scene building like so. so if I add all my tape and I know if you if you watch me all, all the time when it comes to these videos or crafters tv etc etc you know I do say it all the time but I do like to of course enhance the fact that you can use whichever adhesive you prefer but with these videos, I've got all the time in the world to do them. Because I do them in my own time, I've got all the time in the world to do them. So therefore, my go-to is always my double-sided tape. So I'll do all layers individually. And then we'll come along and then we'll combine them together. So let's work away. Now, most of the time, when it comes to my double-sided tape, you'll see me... I'll go all the way round, all four corners and a little bit in the middle, just so that we've got a really good, really good lay down of adhesive. You may sometimes see me, I just do strips of adhesive all the way along. Now, there's no specific reason as to why I do that compared to going all the way around. So if sometimes you see me go all the way around and sometimes you just see me do strips. There's no reason, specific reason as to why I do one or the other. It's just... 
something that I sometimes do. I don't really know why I do it, but I do do it. So how many of you at home are, are, are now shouting what Charlotte shouts at work and that's going do do. So I'm just a little bit off here when it comes to my black layer. So I'm just going to neaten that up that little bit. Like so. And I'm actually just going to... Let's take... That into there. I'm just giving myself a really there we go. Let's just thin that out right. that a little bit more. So I've got my nice little gold layer all the way around. Which that's then going to sit into here. Let's bring in our next layer. Now I'm not gutting any of my cardstock. You can if you want. You've got you've got a number of layers here that you'll absolutely be able to gut. Now, saying that, when I do gut my cardstock, I won't necessarily always gut all the layers. And this is how I distinguish as to what I'm going to cut and what I'm not going to cut. And that purely goes down to what I class as luxury cardstock for myself. So... Very rarely, I'm not saying never, but very rarely, very rarely will you see me gut th things such as black card, white multi-purpose, craft card, or maybe even Centura Peril. Because for me, that is, for me, that is like a daily card stock. Even Centura Peril for me, that is just like a daily staple card stock that I've got. Um, and I know that we do good deals on them at Crafters TV, so I won't necessarily gut them. Now, my luxury card stock, my glitter card stock, my, my um, linen card stock, these to me are my what I would class as my precious card stock. So they're the ones that I would then tend to gut. So what I'm doing is I'm gutting my luxury card stock, making that go longer. And then my essential daily crafting card that I would tend to use all the time. And that is my 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 white, my black, my craft. Uh, although craft and centura apparel I don't use all the time. But these are like key staples that I have. These are kind of like my foundations that are keeping the strength in my card. So I'm taking away some of the layers from my luxury card so that, of course, that's going to last me longer, but I'm not losing any of that strength or structure because I've still got stability when it comes to the white, the black, the craft, etc, etc. So that is how, you know, I don't just think right, I'm going to gut that and not gut that. I do have, uh, there's a reason as to what I got and why I got. So my, what, what I would say is to you, what do you class as your luxury card stock? That's what you're going to gut. And then everything everything else, just keep it as your foundation. You know, white multi-purpose is so inexpensive now when we get good bundles that I, I don't mind it's been seen as waste, even if it's a very, very thin layer. So that is how I work out what do I got, what do I not got. What I do is I class whatever is luxury to me and important to me. That's what I'll got so I can save. And then, of course, the rest is going to just be acting as my foundation. So let's go in with my layers here. And in saying that, without contradicting myself here, as you can see, I'm not gutting any of this. The only reason being is now that I've said that, I've gone and taken the backing off of all of my tape. But yeah, that's how I work out what I'm going to gut and what I'm not going to gut. Now this is totally and utterly well off and it's not that I've layered it on out of sync it's just my black is really really off so if you ever find if you do mats and layers with your guillotine like I do in the way that I show it and you still find that your mat and layers aren't squaring up is because your cardstock's not straight. So make sure your cardstock is straight. Always have, always start cutting 
at the accurate 90 degree angle and then that's going to be you good to go i might do a little youtube video on matting and layering with the cardstock so that's going to go onto the front of our card but what we're going to do before we go any further let's just also do our insert i know i talk about this quite a lot when it comes to my cards at the moment in time this this card will of course more than likely go to one of my little kiddie family members but at this moment i don't know who so i don't know what insert i want to pop in so i'm going to put a blank one in so for this uh, I'm going to go six and a half because I like my inner uh, my inner insert to be slightly smaller because I still like to mat and layer. So that's going to go into there. And then what I do, what I like to do is very rarely as well, when we talk about, I'm just getting black card. When I talk about luxury card stock, I'll very rarely will I use one of my luxury card stocks to mat and layer with. So if you're doing this, again, this is just me and, and what I do and, and my advice to you. When it comes to the insert, so I do a mat and layer like I'm away to show you again. So I have my white multi-purpose that I can then write onto um, or near the time I can then stamp an insert or I can still print one and then pop that over the top. So my white multi-purpose the matte and layer I'll put that onto is I'll always matte and layer that onto the darkest shade of the front of the card. So the card that I'm making here, the darkest shade is a black. Don't ever be afraid to use black when it comes to matte and layer on the inside of your card. Because what you're doing is, even though black's black and it is the darkest colour, although black and white they don't class as a colour, do they? But still, let's just say colour, because to us it's still a colour. Um... Black is still the darkest layer on the front of the card, so you're pulling that colour through to that inside. So even though I'm using a lot of reds, I wouldn't be inclined to use that within my mattes and layers. It would work, it would absolutely work, but I think using the darker shade to matte and layer with works better. So that being said, and to say that one I have cut to uh, six and a half. So just to say on that note as well, if the dark, if I used if I used grey instead of black, then that would still be my darkest tone. So I would use grey for my mattes and layers. Say I used navy instead of black. Navy would be my matte and layer for the insert. So whatever is the darkest tone, that is what I do my mattes and layers with. So let's cut and cut so that I've got that perfect 90 degree angle. So I know now, when I come to matte and layer, this is bang on. So let's take, I'm sure my camera up above, because that, to you, it looks straight. But to me, my guillotine's at an angle, so I must have knocked the cable of my camera above. But anyway, that's by Dubai. What did I say that was? I'm not even paying attention. Six and a half. So let's do six and three quarters by six and three quarters. Let's bring that back in. And then that is going to be my matte and layer. And in actual fact, it's still, it's not that that wants that. My matte and layer is still a little bit too thicker than I want. So let's come down a little bit. There we go. Yep. Like so. So that what we're going to mat and layer so let's bring that in with my tape and we're going to work our way all the way around like so and even although i've got nice secure edges all the way around i always just like to put that extra bit in just so that there's no kind of like bubbling or doming and then just to show you as well, when I said about the other way, sometimes I'll do it. Sometimes I'll go in with my tape, edge to edge. And there's no specific reason as to why I do it that way or that way. It's just purely down to sometimes I'm not thinking. And instead of twisting my card, I just layer my tape side by side. So let's take my 
card. Oh my god, what is going on? Oh, I wonder if it's my white card stock that's not straight. I mean, look at that. That is well off. That must be my white card stock that's off then. Because you've seen me. I gave myself the perfect 90 degree corner. That must be my white card stock. That's off then. There we go. Let's take that off. Let me just do a little tiny little bit of feather in there. So let's go into here. Add my insert. I've still got that little bit of feathering down here at the bottom. Now, if you do do your mats and layers like I do here for inside your card, as like everything, everything's optional. So if you want to have your layer bigger, then you can do. But again, if you do watch me, you know that I do like my framework frame when it comes to my layers. Let's just take my bone folder and give that a good crease. And now we can come along. And then let's start. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. I wonder if that came across here. I do beg, beg my pardon. Let's come along and then let's start to layer all of these up. So there's my first layer. Now within this one, we're going to keep that flat. Actually, I'm going to keep it. No, I'm not going to keep it all flat. I'm going to keep this flat and then my stamped image we're going to take my phone pads so if I take all of that off into here and then all that I'm doing is my width that I've got left and right I want to kind of follow that suit so it's the same kind of depth at the top there so in case you're wondering well how do I know where I'm positioning it the depth of my red satin there I kind of want it the same at the top so that one's going to go into here so let's come along with my foam pads now I've got my foam pads here now these ones are really thick these are about four mil in depth I don't really want four mil. I really only want. Let's bring these ones in. Because I have. This, by the way, is just some of my foam pads. I've got about another two boxes worth of foam pads. But I want slightly thinner, like these ones. Two mil. There we go. Two mil foam pads. And there, there's a reason as to why I want them to be slightly thinner. And that is because when we come to put our belt on, that I will need to lift on foam pads. And I might need that to be slightly thicker. So let's add my foam pads on here. And I just cut my fingernails the day and I even cut my foam pad fingernail. So it's not going to be as easy for me to get them off. So this is it. If you're new to me, then when I cut my fingernails, this fingernail here, I always keep a little bit longer. This is my picking fingernail. Not for anything other than the back end of my foam pads, just to let everyone know that. But what I also do is if we go straight onto there. Over time, now it could be a wee while of time, but over time, with the card sitting up in the heat within the room, whichever room that it's in, because it is your shedless glitter. Your shedless glitter and a dry adhesive, they're not always best friends. Now, I could, of course, just come with my glue gel instead, but I don't do that because I prefer my foam pads. So therefore, what I do, to get that lift from my foam pad, then, of course, I use my foam pad. And then I'll go in with a little scribble of tacky glue over the back. Now, currently, when I go and stick this in, 
my foam pad will stick to my glitter card for now. And then what will happen as the glue dries, the glue will dry into the foam of the foam pad and into the grains of the glitter card stock. Another thing as well, and I, I feel like I keep feel like I keep saying this within this live, but this is purely personal preference. It's a purely personal choice. I can only say what I like to do. When you add foam pads, when you've got a layer and you've got a coverage, please take the back off of all of them. I'll sometimes see people where, like, let's just take this for instance, maybe they'll keep the backing on there because they'll say it's just to create stability so they don't really need that. But then there's a chance that it could still bend or buckle because you've not got that security of the pad stuck to your medium that it could over time stand start to bend or bubble underneath. So if you are using foam pads or foam pad strips, my opinion, all that I would recommend, take the back in off of all of them. You've popped them on, so for all the seconds it's going to take to take them off. So press that in. There's still enough coverage of the, the adhesive from the foam pad to stick. That's not going anywhere. But then also in the meantime, the tacky glue will dry into the foam and into the glitter. And then we're going to come along with our little belt here. And as I was saying before, so what will happen, because I've got that on foam pads, if I sit that on there, we're at an angle because, of course, my belt is half on there and half on there. So I want to counterbalance it. I want to make that a little bit more even. But what I also want to do is just want to make that that tad little bit higher. What I could have done is if I want my belt to be on that same level as this layer here, take the same foam pads that I've just done and then just pop, uh, cut them up and then put a little line underneath, stick it onto top and of course, that's going to make it all nice and flush. As I say, I just want to add that extra little bit of lift. So I'm going to go in with these foam pads, which are uh, four millimeter in depth. So for again, as I said before, what I'm going to do, and these are strips, so I don't need to cut these ones. I'm just going to come along and then I'm just going to add these ones into place and then pop that one onto place and then what that also does that trickery on the eyes well, it's not really but this is actually even although these foam pads are thicker than the ones there this is now completely flush and that's because what you're doing is you're taking into account the foam pads two layers of cardstock two layers of cardstock and two layers of cardstock. So that counterbalances the depth. So I've got a little bit of residual glue on my belt buckle. So let me give that a little bit of a wipe off here. And then what I still want to do though, is I've only got foam pads along that base there, nothing here. So if I come along, let's just add a strip of tape. I don't need to go right to the edges, of course because we're going to come off the edges there. But let's take that one and um, we're going to come along. Let's even those layers up. Press that in. And then that is that. So what I want to do I want to do one other thing and I don't know what I want to do yet. There's something and it's going to come to me in a moment. It's going to come to me. Let's take, let I know. So these little dots here. Now, if I put them onto my white cardstock, they're just going to fall. They're just going to blend in to the back. So what I want to do, let's pull in a little bit of the red. So let's bring in that same die that I've got or any die that you've got that's got little circles. And then let's use, will I use shedless glitter? Or, no, I think, I actually think on this occasion, black's going to work best. Let's try it. It's trial and error. Let's take our mini. Um, kind of be kind of little little rivets as such. Let's 
take the medium one and then just just to give me the idea I know it's two different sizes but see I don't know maybe actually it's fine I uh, uh, do you know actually I think do you know I know I know what it is I know what it needs it does need a sentiment but it needs a sentiment up into here so but do I want to use do I want to use the sentiment that's included do I want to use that sentiment what was it Hello Santa and jingle all the way. And the only reason I'm doubting this, I'm not doubting it, but doubting the use of it, is I like these sentiments, but I'm very, it's like with a lot of my layers, I like s symmetrical. And these are just a little, they're offline. You've got Jingle all the way coming down at the corner and then you've got the Santan coming at the side. Whereas if that was Hello Santa and Santa was lying straight underneath there or it was like Jingle all the way, then I would be inclined to use it. See, I'm, real, I'm, I'm just fussy. I'm just fussy. What, what were the other ones? What? So there's... Let it snow. Do you know what? I feel like I need to use a dye. I wonder... Ah. Ah. Um, no, I know. Let's use... Right. Is this going to fit? Right, I know, I know. Got it. Yes, let's use Hello Santa. Let's use Hello Santa and let's tie it all in together. So I'm just going to use my white multi-purpose for this. So let's bring my stamping platform. Let's bring this in and let's use Hello Santa. I'm doing it right in the middle because we're going to be cutting it out. So let's take that one and let's use so any any kind of sentiment stamping. I always just go to my alcohol proof noir black. You can, of course, still use your quick dry or any of your your ink pads, essentially. So, hello, Santa. Yes, I think, yeah. I think I know where I'm going with this one. Might make a little bit of a spectacle out of the sentiment, but bigger than intended, but you can keep it smaller if you want to. And let's take, what have I done with my cloth? Here it is. I'm not going to get my stamp cleaner out. It's just to the side, but I'm not going to do that. Let's take this out now. Right, let's then, let's bring these. So I'm going to use, so let's take, Let me take this off. Right, let me get my head round this. So that one's going to fit. So I'm not using the smallest one like I've done before. So I'm going to use these two here. Right. Let's go in with the gold. Gold. Always believe in you are gold. Let's take that one and tape this one so let's just tape it all into place secure that and 
then, oh, tell you, these suckers on the bottom of the Gemini are incredible, aren't they? Run this one through. So that's going to go over there. Now, what I could do is I could use this largest die, just the largest die, to die cut it out. But for me, I find it just as simple to let's frame my sentiment. And then cut after. So let's do... Hello, Santa. Oh no, what was that? Hello, Vietnam. What was that again? It was Robin Williams, wasn't it? Hello, Vietnam, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. So let's just let that grab. And then let's just cut around. I've got a little bit of ink on my thumb, so I'm conscious of not to transfer that. There we go. Hello, Santa. So that's then going to go there. But what I might just do, because it doesn't matter that I'm covering the star, what I might just do, and I might not use this, but let's do it just to pull that in. So you've kind of got a triangle of imagery. Let's pop that onto a little bit of black and then give myself a really fine black. Matte and layer. So for this, I'm just going to stick it straight onto my black and then trim. So let's come into there. So let's slither, slither, slither until I get it the way I want it. Slither, slither. And then slither. Oh, no, I just need a neat end. There we go. Actually, yeah, I think that. If I, all that I would have done is let's just say we'll say crit, yeah. That's it. That, bang, that's it. Now, if you're saying, well, say, Craig, Craig, let's say you decided you didn't want that black layer and you've already stuck it on. Well, all we just do is just trim around and cut it off. But there we go. I'm just going to overlap that ever so slightly at the top. Actually, do I? No, let's keep it in there. Because, and this is just by pure chance, my moon, my star, and of course my cloud is... Um, it's kind of like it's, it's covering it, uh, as in it is cuddling it, it is framing around. Now, of course, if you're going to do this at home, if you wanted to add some of your more stars and that, then, of course, you can do do that before. You know, I'm not going to attempt to stamp some extra stars while this is all popped into place, but you can do that beforehand. And then for this one, let's go with my thin foam pads that I've got, my little two mil ones. Let's take these off. Uh, is that, I think that's, is that central? Into there. Yeah. Is that? See, now I'm just, oh, am I going to be able to get that? Oh, yeah. Bring that in. There we go. That's it. Perfect. That's that's what I want. I kind of like how just such a coincidence and unplanned that that's then just framed it. I like that. I like that. How cool is that? 
How cool is that? If you've got any little bells left over from Santa, from Santa's, from Sarah's, from Sarah's, towards the night before Christmas, that would be really good. That would be good if you've got, actually, you could, I'm not going to do it now, but you could go in with your little glitter glues if you want to. Of course, you could spritz some shimmer spray or that as if it's like it's snowing or something or you could go in with your faux snow if you wanted to but there we go there it is so for everyone's record it is seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters i would have had it eight by eight but just the way i'm trying to use up my card blanks it seemed to be a bad batch there we go we have got Hello Santa, all from our layering stamps over the rooftop. And then we use, I know you can always go back and recap this, but we've used Smoke Plume, we use Jet Black, Honey Pot, Chinese Red, and Straw Bale for the quick dries. We used uh, Gold Satin, you can get that within your Gold Luxury cardstock. And really the only item that is newer within the range was the little nesting dies that I used from our Regal Rectangle. But if you've got your little rectangle nesting dies, square nesting dies, then of course you can do that, of course. You can then start to layer them up. Kind of like, look at that. Kind of like that, little, that little bit of framework there that we've got going. How cool is that? Anyway... By the by the point, by the by the point, right there we go. And of course, we have done our insert as well, ready for me to then do as I want when it comes to whoever I'm going to be giving it to. But there we go, we've got our Hello Santa over the rooftops. You can use a variety of different ink pads. You could use your duet if you wanted to. Your sh oh, the shimmer. Oh, why didn't I think of that, Craig? The shimmer would have looked good as well, even when it comes to maybe kind of the Santa going in with one of the deeper shades. I know, I was just looking at them out of the corner of my eye. That would have been good. But then there we go. You can then still expand on your creativity, as I said, about the backgrounds there. Bring in some of the other layering stamps, cross-pollinate them. You can do that. Anything like that, you can absolutely do. Right, I hope you enjoyed that one. Do let me know if you did enjoy that one. I always love seeing your, your comments. I don't always get to reply to them or acknowledge them straight away, but I do see them when they come up, uh, saying how much that you in, enjoy the videos and I love the fact, as I said beforehand, how you enjoy them, that i just done them all in complete real time. But until the next time, I am, and I've got another one, another idea as to what I'm going to be doing and filming and popping up very, very soon. But that one, that was off the back of the Christmas layering stamps that I had on Hobby Maker. Uh, if you are, or I am filming this within Tuesday, the 26th of September. So I had these on Saturday past day, or Saturday, the 23rd of September on Hobby Maker here in the UK. And I did say to you on air that I would do a tuition demonstration for this one. And also from the other set in the previous show, what I'm going to get filming it popped up as well so in the meantime until uh, i get that one filmed in up very very soon hope you enjoyed this little video do let me know don't forget as well give me the thumbs up and then hit that bell notification too because of course whenever i pop these videos up you'll be then alerted when it comes to your phone your tablet your devices to craig laird has just popped a video up now on his crafters companion youtube channel and then while you're there also of course subscribe be good to see you lovely numbers popping up which i really really do appreciate it never thought many people would want to follow me on youtube so i've got i think it's about two 2.1k i'm just over 2.1k and i always say this when it comes to facebook lives and that i never do them on the intention of gauging with numbers i do all of this because i love doing it and if even just one person watched then you know that's worth it to me it's worth it to me. The fact is, you know, certainly within YouTube to uh, over 2K of you have subscribed. I really, really do appreciate it. And the lovely comments too. But until next time, have a lovely rest of the day. Have a lovely rest of the week, whenever, wherever, and however you're watching this video. And we'll see you again very soon. Bye. <laughs>